Now, meandering is when the river is following a zigzag path. So river follows a zigzag path. And in this case, the meandering aspect, how it can be understood is when the river is following this zigzag path, let's say. So if I take a look at this part of the meander, how the movement of the water is going to be, the movement of water is going to be something like this and then like this. So in this case, in this part of the meander, what can be said is the part which is this part this slow, this side or the, this side of the bank, I can call as the concave side with respect to the river. If you are in the river channel, this would appear to be concave and this would appear to be convex. So this is the convex side. This is the concave side. Now on which side there would be more hydraulic force from the flowing river? on the concave side because the water is flowing and hitting directly this side. So there would be more force over here. Due to more force, there would be undercutting of the walls. The walls are going to collapse. The upper part of the overlying overhanging part is going to collapse. And so as a result, there would be more erosion of the concave bank. So more erosion of the concave bank, how it happens, the undercutting when you see would be primarily where, let's say this is the valley. And if I'm saying undercutting is taking place over here. So in this case, the river is flowing like this. So the part which contains the water, there the erosion is going to happen. And so it is going to be undercut like this. Eroded, eroded and undercutting. Now, at this point of time, when we talk about this undercutting, the whole of the valley looks now like this. And so this part, which is there, which is overhanging part now, this overhanging part collapses. As the overhanging part collapses, the new shape of the valley would look something like this. So this results in, first of all, more erosion. Apart from that, this results in a vertical bank, cliff bank. Okay, so this side of the meander that is going to have cliff shaped bank. Which side? Concave side. So concave side has a very steep bank, okay, cliff side bank, which is called as a cut of slope. Yes. Then along with that in the convex bank, what is going to happen is water is actually moving away from it. Water is not directly hitting it. So water is moving away from it. So in this case, the flow of the water is going to be minimal in this part. So in this part, the flow is going to be minimal. And so over the period of time, what happens, the meander starts shifting in this direction because of the cutting. So as the meander starts shifting in this direction, the meander reaches up to here. And now effectively the river is flowing up to there. So in this case, our meander now looks like this, where earlier it was over here. So with respect to this meander shift, you will see water also flowing now up to here. And so water is gradually leaving this bank. So eventually what happens that sedimentation begins on this side and the sedimentation beginning on this side, this sedimentation leads to formation of this type of structure now, which is called as interlocking spur, interlocking spurs. So in any meander, when you'll see the meander, okay, what you'll find is on this, from this side, I find a structure projecting into the river or the meander that is called as interlocking spur, which is a depositional feature over here. 
depositional feature because the river is leaving the bank. So first of all, it will have a very gentle slope. So if you compare this and this, the slope factor that you will see how the slope factor has to be there at the concave slope, the slope would be steeper, which we are calling as cutoff slope. Okay, whereas on the convex side, the slope would be very gentle. And so this uh, slope is called as a slip of slope, slip of slope. And this part, this is called as interlocking spur. So this fact we can see in this particular diagram over here, where you see the meander over here and the meandering taking place like this. So X and Y, which one becomes the convex slope or convex side? Uh, the Y becomes the convex side and X becomes the concave side. We can see over here the vertical cliff shape bank on the X. So X I'm going to call as what? X I'm going to call as? the cut off slope so this one i'll call as the cut off slope whereas in on this side you can see these depositions taking place and the meander is migrating on this side so on this side i have these depositions these are nothing but interlocking spurs when they will grow something like this so first interlocking spurs and in this case you will see the slope to be gentle and so this convex bank, which is there, it will have be called as the slip of slope. So based on this cut off slope and slip of slope, now if I just think of how the uh, cross profile of a meander like this should look like. So what should be the shape of the cross profile over here? How the cross section is going to look like? On one side, a steep slope. On another side, gentle slope. So can we say, in general, when you say cross profile, let's say you draw like this. That is a cross profile. Okay, both the banks, this is a symmetric slope of the valley. Now in this case, a specific case of meander, what is the change that I should make over here in this case? One side should be steep, another side should be gentle. So can we draw it to be looking something like, uh, this okay where in this side this is going to represent what slope this is our cutoff slope and this is the slip off slope so this is how due to meandering the cross profile of the valley changes and primarily the idea in case of meandering is because in the meander, the two slopes or the two sides or the two banks which are there, one convex and one concave, they experience differential erosion. One side experiencing more erosion, another side experiencing lesser erosion. So it makes the valley asymmetric with one side being a cliff shape, whereas another side having a very gentle slope. So this is the cross profile of the valley with respect to meander.